Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I want to be testing out if we can make an engine work off of the gas tanks you see here on the left and putting air and exhaust into these tanks therefore enabling a diesel engine to work in space or underwater. So this is an idea that's been with me ever since we got the compressed gases update and I've heard mixed things from different people so I want to go and try it for myself and prove it once and for all to myself and in this video whether we can use these types of gas tanks to store exhaust and to store air that's going to feed a diesel engine and allow us to use it. So we do have an engine here. This is a simple model that I've created. I showed this in another video, but pretty much you could see we're getting the generator going and the engines chugging along nicely. And of course it is open to the atmosphere. But what if I wanted to put this in a mini sub? So first things first, I duplicated this engine and I want to run them at the same time because I want to see if providing it compressed air and storing the exhaust is going to give us a different output on the generator. So that's one test that I want to do. But first thing first, what we'll do instead of this nice exhaust port, we're going to remove this and let's put a tank. Now, of course, we're going to have to have a way to pump out this exhaust eventually. So it wouldn't quite do to put it just like this. So what I would recommend, let's see, is putting a T-piece and then we can go ahead and put our tank. Now I'm going to use this medium one just because I feel like this is something that can be easily stored in a vessel. But of course, if you have a larger sub, you can put something like this. I kind of want to see what happens with a smaller tank. And in this one, I'm actually going to put air, but at zero. So this is going to be our exhaust. And on this port, or in this kind of T-piece end here, what I do want to do is either put a pump that can be activated when you're on the surface to release that exhaust. So that would just be kind of like this. And we'd run it pretty much and remove it. So I'm going to actually do that system because I'm quite curious how this would work. And this will be attached to there. And of course, we've got to feed get the uh, electricity to everything here. But that pretty much sums up that portion. Now the pumps do work as um, directional filters. So when you have fluid out, you can't accidentally have it go from this direction into the left. Now for the air in, we're going to delete this port here. And I'm going to use a similar system to this actually to allow us to both pump in air into our system and store some gas. So we could do this. And then I'm just going to have a tank sticking out of this direction. Now I'm not quite sure the ratio of how much air we use versus how much exhaust we create, if it's one to one or not. So because of that, I'm not sure of the difference in tank size. Like maybe we only need a small uh, exhaust tank and a large air tank, but I don't know that relationship. So something like this now would also work. And of course, we'd be able to turn this on to both pump in like this one can be when we're on the surface, we run both pumps and allow us to both add new air into the system and remove exhaust out of the system. Now, I do know that there's a bug that has these <laughs> air manifolds, accept as much air as needed and pretty much dissolve it into nothing. So this system may be broken right off the get-go. We may actually have to have one of those, um, have a valve that can be opened or closed based on allowing um, air to enter the system. Because the second I spawn this, this air may enter this intake and be gone forever. Yep, you could see that happening here. The tank content is rapidly getting removed and it's going into this bottomless void that we know as the modular engine air in manifold. However, the exhaust is hanging out at a pure vacuum. It is zero atmospheres in there, which would be quite hard to accomplish. So I'm not quite sure of the viability of that when you uh, recharge your system with the pump. But for now, we have to fix this issue here. Right away, this tells me two things. First thing is that we have to put a valve and second thing is we can't put a valve that will just open right up and allow everything to enter the system. No, we have to put a valve that can actually control the amount going through it. So it's the variable valve 
and I don't quite know what value that should be, so we'll see what we can figure out here. I kind of run the next bit of the video with the pump in the wrong direction, make sure it's orientated in the right direction, meaning that the fluid out is filling up your gas tank. You're going to see randomly the video is going to be corrected in a little bit here. So I'm just going to put the valve right here and if we double check you can see here this is fluid in. That's very important because it can't flow from left to right in this case. It can only go in and out through there. But it's good. Once this valve is off we can actually recharge our system. So that actually means that everything else should be okay. So the only thing we need to put now is a value associated with this. Now to find out the starting number from this variable valve, I'm going to actually run this engine because I'm curious to see what goes in through here. So you can see the throttle is 0.5 and it's kind of jumping between the various liters per second of air that it consumes. That fluctuating number didn't really help us much. So what I'm going to try for starters sake is whatever throttle we're applying to the air manifold, that's the same throttle I'm going to apply to the valve control. Let's just see what happens. So I turned on the engine and you could see here we're actually running right now and the carbon dioxide is building inside the exhaust but we also have the air gas tank here that is also being depleted. But what is good is that it seems to be running quite nicely and the numbers aren't dropping extremely slowly so I would say this test actually works and the nice thing is this is a fully self-sufficient system whereas over here we're actually relying on the atmosphere here we're purely using these tanks and fun fact we're getting more out of the generator here we're getting 42.6 here we're getting 48.1 so almost two points higher i'm guessing that's because this engine is almost acting like a supercharger right now the compressed gas flowing through here is pushing it at a higher level than what is being sucked in here through just this uh, fluid port end. So this might be acting as you'd expect from a supercharger's sake where it's pressurizing the air as it goes in through this air manifold. Now if I put it to 100% throttle, we could see here the generator has doubled, it's making 101 and here we're making 91. So here we're actually 10 points higher in creating electricity. And of course, as expected, our tank content is depleting pretty quickly. But what's interesting to me is the thought that as the pressure in the gas tank here drops, the engine will actually start to suffer because it won't sort of work at like that supercharging system, but rather it'll be maybe a possibly weaker um, atmosphere and it'll probably stall out at that point. But as we proved now, you could actually make a self-contained submarine um, generator or space generator to provide electricity and honestly inside this tank we have a long ways to go we're just at 1.3 and here we're kind of removing the pressure we're still at 6.8 and it's dropping i'd be curious to how long this works now i'm really curious how much these small tanks will allow so this we're going to have as our air tank and this we're going to have as our exhaust but one thing that I want to do, instead of starting off at zero, which is a pure vacuum, which is probably impossible, what I actually want to do is start off at 1%. And the nice thing is, if our submarine or creation, whatever that we attach this self-contained engine to, is not underwater or in a position, or if it is in a position where we could actually open up this valve, then I will put a port, just like that. And then what you can do is actually open up this and your exhaust is going to be vented right out and into the atmosphere thereby not using this system and probably just for the same reason i imagine we'd want to have the exact same thing here where again if you are in a place where you could just open everything up it can still function properly so i'm going to do that the valves that i've placed on the exhaust and air can now hopefully allow us to run without using the compressed tanks or if we want to we could still use them now the downside is that you still may build exhaust and you still may you still will use whatever is in this so to have a true system that will allow 
you to kind of conserve that would actually require you to move this out and put this here. But something kind of I fear with this is that this is fluid in, but we actually would need that valve to be able to transfer liquid in both directions. So I'm going to start up our system again, give it some throttle, but this time I'm going to open these up. And now as our engine builds and works, you'll see that it will use this obviously but it'll also be pushing it out through this port and likewise this one is also pushing the exhaust out here especially as we give it more throttle you'll see that that should go th go out there rather than filling in here and you can see it's kind of pumping that out there through that port but that's okay so now we're kind of working in a system but if we close this now we're running off of our stored tank and we're pumping it into this tank. Now you can see our content is very low right now and we're going to stall here quite soon. So in this case, you turn the engine off and now you realize that we have the pump facing the right direction. So you'll want to check that all of these are closed and closed and then you can start to turn on your pumps and that will now pressurize both your gas tank for the air and it will pump out everything out of this exhaust tank. So once we're kind of recharged and at a happy level, you can see here we're adding more content for the, um, the gas. At some point, not much more will go in, so we can turn off this system and now we're recharged to run the engine. And you turn the engine back on and you'll see that this will start to get depleted and this here will start to get filled. Now I guess I do recommend using a bigger gas tank than what you see here, just because this one I don't think will last for very long, but I'll run the test and let you know. So when this tank is at 100% fill, it actually has a pressure of 32 atmospheres, which is a lot. So this little pump probably can't get us to that level that we want. I know that these pumps have an issue with pumping into high pressure situations. So either you just have a valve opening for a hose and you detach a hose and have a vehicle that will have a large pump or the vehicle we place itself will have a large pump to get us this 32 atmospheres. But at a tank content of 25, which is a lot, we should be able to run this for some time. So let's just put this thing to 100% throttle and start her up. I did a test so you don't have to. I ran this system at 100% throttle for more than 15 minutes without the tank depleting and without the exhaust tank being full. What actually caused the engine to stop was a lack of fuel. So with this system you can run for 15 minutes or so depending on the fuel with these small tanks. Obviously this number isn't fixed, the size of the engine matters, the throttle, all kinds of factors. but just sharing with you the numbers that I got. So what was interesting, I did also find, is that while we start off making more on our generator because we get that supercharged effect where the pressure from this is actually pushing the gas right in, as we start to get closer to three atmospheres in this tank, this starts to behave just like this one and they fully match one to one. So you don't lose or you lose that supercharging factor with the compressed gases, of course. And another thing that I also noted was I was able to actually keep the engine running until I got down to like near vacuum, like less than one atmosphere. So with that in mind, we actually seem to have a decent amount of time to push the air from this into this system and give us kind of that underwater experience with an engine without needing to surface. So I did find that test result quite interesting and I probably would add a full X piece here with a hose fitting so you could actually use a truck or alternative source to plug fill this up. Other than that like this is pretty much what I would use and this is a decent amount of charge for example, if you charged your submarine for this long, like if it was a small mini sub, you'd probably get a decent amount of the battery full. So anyway, 
there you have it, some interesting ideas and information on how to get a diesel engine working in a situation where you don't have any air or anywhere to put your exhaust. So, thank you all for watching, stay tuned for more videos, stay tuned for more content, stay tuned for creations and a bunch of fun stuff. Thank you all for watching, until next time, happy storm racing everyone.